David with Philippine American Couple. Welcome back to the channel. Today is another episode of It's Chit Chat Time. And today my special guest is my very good friend, Baldy, who happens to be married to a lady from Korea. And we're going to talk about that. So to get started a little bit, how long have you guys been married? So 17 years. 17 years. Yep. And how long have you known her? 19. Okay. And you guys, how did you guys meet? We met in a uh, dance hall in uh, Springdale on New Year's Eve. It was it love at first sight? No. No, uh, actually, uh, I was uh, supposed to meet another lady there, and she was there, and she was with another guy that night. And I was dancing with different ones. And finally she came over to me, the lady, she's real nice. And she said, why don't you go over and ask that lady to dance? She said, I think she would probably like to dance. And so I did. And so we danced. And then uh, I seen her like maybe two weeks later. And then maybe off and on I've seen her down there. And I think it was probably well six months before we actually, uh, you might say, connected. Right. Okay. You know, like in that respect. I mean, so no, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't love at first sight. No, but uh, as we got to know each other, we both had uh, some of the same chemistry about things that we liked and what we thought about life. Good. And I think that's probably what led us to go together. Okay. In that respect. It wasn't uh, It wasn't the fact that somebody come to me and said, here, here's a lady that would be the right lady for you or nothing. Yeah. That was not at all. So you I had, made I your had take no, its course. I had absolutely did not know Haitia whatsoever until New Year's Eve. That I had went to the VFW by myself. Right. And I went down there once in a while just to have something to do. Yeah. And so that, that's how it appeared. That's how it actually happened. That's great. On, on a New Year's Eve. Uh, so, but no, we did not see each other right away at first at all. Now, guys, in full disclosure, I know his wife very, very well. I've known her since I was literally in the sixth grade. So I've, I've known Haisha all of my life. Her son and I grew up together. So in all fairness, Baldy here is a very good friend. So um, that's why I wanted to have him here today. So now you've been to Korea, right? Have you gone to Korea? Yes. What did you think? What was that like? Well, Korea is a nice country. Uh, Korea is not a clean country like we are. What And what I mean by that is like on the streets, for instance, the dogs can crap and uh, they're not as clean. Uh, they're not as clean as America as a whole, but yet the people are very uh, cooperative. I mean, and after you, after you're in Korea, the older people, like say my age, once they know you are American and you will talk to them and they can talk to you, the impression I got is that they cannot thank America enough for what they did back in World War II. In Korea? Yes. Yeah. They stand behind the United States a hundred percent. They, they look down at us as though we are superior to them. Right, right. So, but uh, religion is not, uh, and that's one thing I, I learned. Part of the country is, is Buddhist. Re religion is not a main thing in Korea, yeah. like it is here. Right. They have Buddhists, but a lot of people don't pertain Christ. to it. Anything. The uh, Protestant churches are, they're there, they operate. But the thing that is, Korea is supposed to be 
I think about 60 to 70 percent Catholic. Wow. And they only have about 10 percent of their people that go to church. Okay, okay. But Korea does have, they, they have got some of the most uh, beautiful architecture in their churches you have ever seen. Yeah, I've heard that. It, it is out of this world and uh, you can take pictures till you're blue in the face, but you can never really imagine what it is until you actually go there and see it. When they built a church, they did not waste money. Nice, nice. So they, and they muscle that into high regards is, is why they do that. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So, but it's amazing to see that kind of a church and nobody going to it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you have right, to wonder right. why they spent that much money on the church right. and then nobody's in it. Yeah, that is kind of funny. Uh, but that, that's exactly true. That's the way it is. The other thing, uh, in Korea, Sunday is not a holiday. Holy day, just another day no. of the week. People can go to church, but if you go to church, you want to work, you do whatever you got to do, it's just, it's just another day. It's like they don't have a Dedicated. worship day like we do. Right, okay. That, that's their, that's their culture. characteristic. Yeah, that's, that's their culture. That's their culture and that's what it is. It's, it's been that way for years, it's never changed. So in the time that you were in Korea, from the day that you landed into the day that you flew back home, did your opinion or fondness for Korea change any? Well, the Korea, I was very interested in it, and it's a very interesting country, and it's a nice place to be, but I really think to, for a American to survive there, you almost have to grow up in that country and learn their skills and learn their culture to work with them because it's just like them coming to here. You know, when they come here, they're lost till after they're here a while. Yeah. And learn us and learn what we do and what we don't do. And it's the same way for us. If we go back there, we have to learn what's right, what's wrong. And what's, what's this appropriate. And, that. and so consequently, yeah. but uh, don't get me wrong, Korea is a very beautiful country. They have a lot of hills, they have a lot of beautiful scenery, uh, and like that. Yes, it is. Very agricultural over there. Yes, very But much. the farms over there, Dave, are very small. You know, a field, if they have a field that's 10 acres, that's considered a big field. Wow. Wow. But they have a lot of fields on different levels. Terraces. Mm -hmm. And that's, yeah. that's how they do it. Yeah. So it's a, but it's a very pretty country. I mean, they, the, the roads are different. They, uh, they build roads uh, probably equal to ours. But the one thing that Korea does to mandate their roads to keep them up is that they're like our dump trucks here. We have your front axle, two tires, and then you may have three set of axles on the back for a dump truck. Over there, they will have up to five axles on the back. To distribute the weight. And better. two axles on the front. Yeah. They have four wheels on the front that turn. Yeah. So consequently, when you do that, you do not tear up the roads. Yeah, you spread the weight out even more. Yes. Yeah. So in that respect, when it comes to like cement trucks and stuff like that, Korea is way ahead of the United States. Yeah. I mean, uh, when yeah. they build a road, they build a good road, but they also maintain that that road's going to last. So you have to have certain things. If you're going to carry a certain amount of weight on that truck, you have to have the axles to carry it. Oh, nice. Now, you have kind of a funny story that you guys have told about when you were in Korea and um, having to find a McDonald's. 
was it a McDonald's? At the end of the day, Haitian thought that you needed to have some protein. Oh, uh, no, so I don't you, follow you, Dave. She uh, she told the story about when you were in Korea that they don't eat as much meat. Oh, in that respect, yes. Well, what I've always said this, the Korean people aren't very big. Haitia is small here, but when you go to Korea, she's an average sized person. Right. And I say this, Korea, their bodies never get to uh, grow like American people do because they don't have the food. And what I mean by that is they have food, but they live on fish right. and soup. For Americans like to have hamburgers, Steak, steak potatoes. and roast and stuff like yeah. that and so we get a different complete nourishment for our bodies and that's why the american people grow and that's, grow to the size they are that's why we're so fat by the way <laughs> because of that right yeah they they do not uh they could have soup three times a day right and you know dave if you live on soup three times a day you're not going to do hard physical labor. No. Yeah. It just isn't there to carry it. That's all there is to it. Yeah. But in Korea, that's very normal. It is. Just like that's a lot of other their, Asian countries. Their life, their, their life, they were born, they were raised that way. And so that's the way it is. I mean, uh, Korea, they have a McDonald's over there. Hamburgers. And we went, when we wanted a hamburger, we had to go to McDonald's. Right. You can't buy a hamburger no place. No. So, yeah, it's interesting. And so, consequently, uh, that doesn't mean that the Korean people aren't good. Oh, no, they're great people. the Korean people just never get the nourishment when they're young. And so, consequently, they never develop a very big body. Yeah. Which isn't a bad thing. You know, uh, you know, a lot of times um, I tell people Americans oversized. Yeah, so but that's you know every every country has its ups and downs. Like yeah. you know, I mean, so, uh, but that's that's what I seen. I mean, I thought I thought Haitia was small, and she is, but yet when you go to Korea, she's an average sized person. Right. She is not small at all. She's not big. She's just the average sized person. That's why when I go to the Philippines, I am gigantic. <laughs> oh, I bet you are. <laughs> you know? So, let me ask you, what did you think of, or did you think of, Korea before you met Haitia? So, did you have any concept of Korea before you no. met Haitia? No, I actually uh, had studied Korea when I was in high school, but... Uh, I never ever had no concept that Korea was not a good country or anything like that. It's just that uh, they're just another country like, say, China mm -hmm. or Germany or any place else. And unless you actually go there and visit there and see what it is, you could read all you want. But it's completely different when you go there yourself and see it. The books never ever get to you the actual feeling of what it is. The reality. Yeah, I would say this. Going to Korea was a very good experience. I would go back tomorrow again. Uh, nice country. Probably won't go back because of Haitia and her health. But I mean, uh, yeah. I would have no trouble going back to Korea. Uh, well, every time we fly to the Philippines, we, we go to Ichon, the Korean, major Korean airport, and it's the greatest airport that I've ever been to. So I, I would love to go see the interior part of Korea. Well, Korea, the airport over there where we land, I guess uh, I did not know this till after we was there and come home, but where the airport in Korea is now at Seoul, the big airport. Yep. That actually was a lake back in yeah. World War II. Yeah, it's a beautiful airport. And they uh, drained that lake, I guess, and hauled fill in and this and that. 
and it is huge. It's huge, gigantic, biggest one I've ever seen. The only way you can get to where you're going is you give the guy your ticket and show him where you got to be, and you get on the cart and you ride. Because yeah. <laughs> if you're gonna walk, you're never gonna get there. <laughs> no, it would. If we would have, the last time we were there in Inchon, if we would have walked, it would have took us over thirty minutes to get to our terminal. Oh yes, I believe that. It's so big of an airport. It's beautiful, and technology like you can't believe. But it's just, it's a big, big airport. Yeah, I was. Uh, I thought Dallas, Texas. You can put two. Was a big Dallas's. airport, yeah. but I'll tell you that airport in Korea <laughs> makes Dallas look small. Yeah, I think you can put two or three Dallases in Korea. Yeah. <laughs> so that's yeah, that's the truth. I mean, I you you would never dream, uh, and yet you know the the funny part is, so Dave laying all jokes side. You know that Korea is a country, but actually. Korea is only approximately, I think, 400 miles north and south and about 300 miles across. So it's not a gigantic land mass? No, it's not uh, like Germany or Russia or anything. Korea is, a, is not much bigger than actually some of our states right. when it comes that. to that yeah. Yeah. Uh, in being in size. Right. That's just the way it is. Yeah, that's okay. So let me ask you, um, what are some of the, the cultural things that in all the years of being married that you've, you've maybe, that Haitia does or, they, or her Korean friends do that make you um, smile or giggle or chuckle a little bit or sometimes, as I do with Lorelai, scratch my head going, uh, well, the I would say this, living with a person from another country is a complete different culture, and you have to be very willing to give and try and understand them. Uh, however, they are willing to understand, but Sometimes their ideas of uh, cleanliness is different than ours in the way they do it. Mm -hmm. It's basically the same thing, but their idea is different. Yeah. Uh, I would say that the one thing that's uh, is their cooking is completely different than ours. And they have some foods that I really like. They have some stuff that I don't like. Do you have a favorite? No, no, but their Korean food is good. Yes. Uh, but yet, the thing of it is, I can't eat all Korean foods because Korean has a lot of spice in their food. Yeah, like kimchi? Yeah, yeah, and I cannot eat a lot of that. And that hot pepper beef? Uh, they are Woo! very, very hot peppered. Man. And, uh, my, my stomach just won't tolerate that. But now, Dave, in the years that we've been married, Heisha has learned to eat American food, and she actually eats more American food now than she does Korean food, and she has less trouble. Yeah. Uh, that's one thing that I can actually tell you that uh, Korean people... Uh, for instance, the cancer rate in Korea, uh, let's say per capita, 100 people. Okay, let's say 100 people in America, you have 10 people probably get cancer. In Korea, that's probably 50 to 60%. Gotcha. And I think a lot of that comes from eating too much spicy foods, and it's very hard on your stomach. Right. And so... I think this is something that uh, the Korean has probably learned over the years and they're probably trying to get away from that a little bit, but that's very true. Uh, when I was there, and it's a known fact right now, that there's probably 60 to 
percent or over, the Koreans that die, die from cancer. Mm -hmm. They don't die from a heart attack. They don't die from strokes, stuff like that. But they die of cancer. That's the number one thing over there. That's big. That is big. Yes, it is very, very high. Oh, so how, how did you adapt to the whole shoe issue? How did I what? Adapt to having to take your shoes off in the house. That, uh, anybody can adapt to anybody if you're willing and want to do it. Yeah. Uh, I have people ask me, well, how could you stand that? Or how could you do that? You know, it's really not a trick at all. Uh, I think that has to be in the, your own mind I would if agree. you want to do it you can do it if you don't want to no you're not going to do it yeah it don't make any difference what it is in but case you're wondering adapting to it is easy if you want to do it that's right if in case you're wondering in asian cult, uh, cultures the rule of thumb is you take your shoes off before entering the house that's what what that is it took me a little bit to get used to that um because sometimes you got to be pragmatic Sometimes you got to have shoes at the front door. You got to have shoes at the back door. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> shoes in the garage so that if you decide to go out one way or the other, there's a pair of shoes that you can put on. That's right. But uh, now, that's one thing uh, that I will say in Korea. Uh, you do not go in any house wearing your shoes. It's considered disrespectful. That's right. right. That is very disrespectful. Like when we go to Hesha's relation that's here, first thing I do is always take my shoes off at this door. Yeah. Never go in with our shoes. That's, that's considered not very nice. And I think the key, if, you, if you're going to pursue a relationship with somebody from another country, whether it's Canada, Germany, Australia, Asian country, South American country, it doesn't matter. You have to understand what their cultures are, and you have to be willing, like you said, to buy into well, that. The thing of it is, Dave, you have to respect their cultures because that is the way they were born and raised. Yeah. And that's their life, and I mean, that's the way it's going to be. Yep. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just there. Right. It's not any different than us uh Going to the store and buying something. We buy it what we want, we get what we want, we take care of it. Bring it home, put it in the refrigerator, put it in the cupboard. They have their ways of doing things. And their ways of doing things may be a little bit different than ours. But the basic point is it all comes down to pretty much the same thing. It's just a different way of doing it. It is. And one thing that I tell people all the time is if you're going to marry somebody from a different culture, only do that if you can accept that culture. If you feel like that you have to change that person to be like you, then she's not the right person for you. Then don't marry them. Don't oh, get involved with them. That, because you fall in love with the person, and the culture is the person. So that's what you do. You don't want to change people. No, I, I agree with you there, Dave. If you what advice would you give the pre-married Baldy, you know, from 18, 19 years ago, before you met Haisha, if you could look back and tell that young man who's getting ready to embark upon this journey of marrying a young lady from another country, looking back, what advice would you give him? Well... Dave, I was born and raised on a farm. And so when I was actually 18, 19 years old, my goal was to work and get enough money ahead so I could have my own farm. So I could be on my feet. Because I could see already when I was 20 years old that if I was going to live on Social Security when I got ready to retire, I would never be able to live. So I knew at that time already that I had to have a home paid for and I had to have some securities besides Social Security. And that was my goal. Good. My goal then was to try and get myself established. Right. 
right. and get on my feet. Now, today you see kids that are 30 years old don't even know what they want to do. Yeah. But back when I was raised, that was pretty important. It was. It is. It is. Well, it still is today. The only thing is, most people don't realize it till they're too late. Yep, I agree. I agree. And with so that. that's, uh, I would say that was the number one thing. Uh, but if you could go back to right when you met Haitia, mm -hmm. okay, think about this. Right back when you met Haitia, uh, and compared today, that that young man who met Haitia. What advice would you give that young man who entered into marriage with Asia? Well, I think the first thing I would say is uh, you got to get to know the person. And then I would say when you get to know the person, you're going to know if that person can manage uh, money, uh, how they're going to live, if they're going to live like you want to live, if that's your style. Uh, there's a lot of things that come into it. Uh, of course, I was 50 some years old or 60 when I met Asia, but you have to realize that what you have at that time, are you willing to take a risk of losing it? Yeah. Or are you willing to take, or is this person going to be there to help you? Right. It's not, uh, if this person is going to be looking for what they are going to get only, then you don't want to do it. That's right. That's right. That's great advice. It uh, is. And so I think you get have to get to know the person and you have to study that person and learn what kind of a person that they are, That's right. whether it's a man or a woman, either way. Uh, however, in our case, Haitia was a lot, her principles were a lot the same like ours. And through the years, I've helped her not so much uh, financially, but helped her to manage her finances. And that's one thing that a lot of your partners will not do. Right. My grandmother, uh, she was German. My, my grandmother used to have a saying that your partner, your spouse, is supposed to be your help mate. And so she referred that to her, her spouse, James, my grandfather, all the time, as your help mate. So you help each other through everything, That's thick right. and thin, uh, finances, everything. That's right. If one knows something, you teach it to the other. That's right. That's that's what her philosophy was. Yeah. So that's uh, that's a, well, the first thing I would say because if uh, if you connect up with somebody and even though that person seems to be the right person with you, and you study that person and they do not know how to handle finance or handle certain things then maybe you better think twice before mm -hmm. you do. Because this is a big challenge. And this, that right there, a lot of times can either make it or destroy it one way or the other. So if you're, if you're able to live to be 100 years old, what would you want that 100-year-old man to remember about your life? Well, I guess I would say that I would hope that I could remember that my wife took good care of me and, and that uh, I took good care of her and tried to do the best of my ability. That's great. I mean, uh, that's all you can do. God willing, that's, uh, that's what we all want, is just a good life. We do. Yeah. A good life with a good partner and a good partnership. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. We do. And so that would be my, uh, right now in my life, I have no complaints. I'm, uh, 
very proud of myself and our lives and the way they are and what we have, the home we have and everything we have. I, I don't know how I could ask for any more. Wow. That's the, that's the way we all wish we could be, is in that position. That's we, right. We all wish we could be, be there, and hopefully someday we will get there. Why don't we end it on that note, or one last note of what advice could you give somebody? Just one brief piece of advice that you would, you would sum up a whole thing about marrying somebody from another country. Number one advice. I think the number one advice is, first of all, you got to meet the person and see if this is of your category that you enjoy doing, if you enjoy being with each other and what you like to do. And if that is okay, then I think you need to study each other and make sure that what you are going into, that that person understands you and you understand that person. And that uh, if you do that and everything is a plus, then there should be no problem. I would agree. I think that's great advice. Okay, friends, that's it for this episode of It's Chit Chat Time. Uh, we will see you guys around the corner.